What's going on? This is your man, Big Stu Scott Stewart, or Professor Stewart, depending on how you know me. And we are back with another episode of Dope People, where we talk to the dopest people in their industry, primarily education, from around the world. And I know I say it every single episode, but I'm excited to say it again in this episode because it's still true. Uh, I, I, when it's not true, I'll no longer say it. But we're excited to bring to this episode one that's better than the last episode. Like they just keep getting better. Today we have with us Dr. Balin A. Durr. Dr. Durr, welcome to Dope People. Well, thank you so much for that, Professor Stewart. You know, I'm equally excited to have this conversation with you as well. It's, it's, right. It is always a joy. It is a joy. We have some of the most amazing, robust conversations, and I'm glad to get one of these conversations on record. Uh, so let's get into it a little bit. Dr. Balin A. Durr is a board-certified psychiatrist with 20 years of experience in adolescent, child, and adult psychiatry. She uses a holistic collaborative approach to mind-body wellness from the healing intersection of traditional and alternative medicine and spiritual well-being. Dr. Durr has provided care largely to the vulnerable, uninsured, and underserved in a variety of clinical settings, including as the director of the Acute Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Inpatient Unit of Ridge Hospital in Lexington, Kentucky. Founder of a private practice, Dr. Durr had a groundbreaking role in providing telepsychiatry services for almost a decade. And in her most recent role as a psychiatrist at the Will County Community Health Center, where she provided lectures to medical providers and teaches students in physician assistant and nurse practitioner programs. Dr. Durr graduated from Embry University with a BA in sociology. She obtained her medical degree from the University of Illinois at Chicago, completed nine months of pediatrics at the Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx, New York, and completed the general psychiatry residency and child and adolescent psychiatry residency at the University of Florida. Dr. Durr is the executive producer and host of Dr. Durr's Living in the Sweet Spot. She also released a podcast on addiction, depression, and suicide titled Today's Mental Health. Dr. Durr is a poet and author of Heaven Abounds in You, The Journey to Joy. She has shared her empowering message in the U.S., Canada, and the Caribbean, offering practical tools and solutions from the healing intersection of mind, body, medicine, science, and spiritual well-being to awaken and empower you to live out your infinite potential to live life in the sweet spot. Dr. Durr's vision is to heal minds, touch hearts, and change lives. She believes passionately when you heal your mind, all things are possible. Again, welcome, Dr. Durr, to Dope People. So, yes, thank you so much, Scott. I, I'm uh, honored to be here, to be considered a dope person. Uh, also, again, like you said, let's have this conversation. Get it, Let's get it on record. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. it's, it, absolutely. We're glad to have you. This is going to be a fun roller coaster ride. Um, one of the prerequisites, we don't, we don't make you dope. Like wait, you're wait, wait. dope yes. already. We just, we just here, like you're already dope. So we didn't make you dope, but you're, you just dope. Um, okay. So that's the, that's the very technical educational professional side of you. Very important. Um, but we want to get you also to know, we want to get to know you a little more intimately, a little more casually. And here on dope people, we do, um, this or that. Are you familiar with this or that? A little bit. A little bit. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to give you two options, kind of rapid fire. Don't overthink it. And okay. you're just going to pick this one or that one. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? 
I am. All right. Markers or crayons? Markers. Write or text? Write. Talk or listen? Talk. <laughs> Day or night? Oh. Um day library or museums library book or movie book rain or snow rain piercings or tattoos neither neither is <laughs> not an option <laughs> So we're gonna go with piercings. <laughs> okay, all right. Look, you everybody gets the same treatment. Everybody gets they try it, they try it on here. Neither is not an option. <laughs> well, listen, I got pierced ears, so I can do that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> um breakfast or dinner? Breakfast. Teachers or parents? Teachers. Teachers or principals? Teachers. Money or fame? Money. Love <laughs> or money? Love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dunn. Thank you for being such a good sport. That's awesome. You did a great job. Thank great you. Job. So, uh, tell us. Dr. Durr. Um, Dr. Durr, sixth grade, for most of us, that's middle school, probably about 12 years old. Where Wait were you? Where were you in sixth grade? Who was Dr. Durr, 12 year old, sixth grade? Who were you? Oh, I was I was a kid trying to figure it out. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. <laughs> you know, um, I had um, busing had started the year before, so I was bused to this beautiful school, and um, it was unique and different. It had four pods, so the classrooms were pods. It was big pods, and each I could hold like four classrooms. They usually only had three going at a time. Um, and, you know, there was things unique and different about it. So it, it I think it inspired you to learn. Um, it was a, it was a wonderful learning environment. So what so, was this in Chicago? Was this in Kentucky? Where were well, like, where were you even born? I was born here in Chicago and um, I went to uh, that particular school was Chateau Elementary. So that was out here I think that's Hazelcrest. Uh, it's either Hazelcrest or Country Club Hills. I'm not sure, right? That's just riding the bus to get there. <laughs> and, um, um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's where that was. And, you know, so yeah, I didn't know who I was. I just was trying to do my best. That's, what, that's what, what that was. What kind of grades um, did you get? And how, like, how, what was your, what do you remember about being social? as a as at, at 12 years old or you know kind of take us through that a little bit so you know I when you asked the question about talking or listening I was like you got to tell the truth because I tell people I said the only thing stopping me from talking is air <laughs> <laughs> let me get my breath huh <laughs> yeah as long as there's some air <laughs> Crazy, crazy. So, hey, self awareness is important, everyone. It's important yes. to be self aware. Okay. Yes. So, uh, despite the fact that listening is very much a part of of, of um, my profession, um, but but yeah, so I was and as you, I was very social, right? I like and I love people. I like people, so I like to talk to people. I like to engage people. You know, I'm warm and friendly. Um, which is interesting enough, the feedback that I, you know, got from some of um, 
with then kids that I grew up with, of course, now they're adults, but just in having the conversations, that's even, that's what they would even say about me, you know, that you were, you were nice and you would talk to us and you play with us and, you know, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's me. I, I, I like people. So, um, so yeah, I was, I was very social. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had, you know, A's and B's, and I'm sh- I'm sure on something, you know, I might get might get in a, in a, an occasional C that wasn't commonplace for me, but no, I liked school and I liked academics and I liked excelling and I liked, you know, frankly, um, you know, I I liked the pat on the backs that I got, you know, from my teachers for doing well in school, you know, mm. but then but I but I was also athletic. So I was oh. equally equally good as an as, as an athlete as I was, you know, as um, you know, in academics. And actually, interestingly, one of the, you know, this was kind of later junior high, but one of the boys that I grew up with, and we were on the track team together. He's like, "Man, you you, you would outrun me." Of course, that was embarrassing. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Still so. still holding on to the femininity. Didn't want to. That's interesting. That's actually, actually, that's a very interesting insight. Um, being embarrassed by that accolade, if you will, because that's almost he's giving you credit. Uh, and you're like, okay, so that's very no, 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 no. He was the one that was embarrassed. He was embarrassed that he was being beat by a girl. That part. That's yeah. the part. I know we said it differently, and that's the part that I actually honed in on, right? Okay. Uh, he was embarrassed. You weren't embarrassed, but being embarrassed to be beat by a girl, right? Yes. Um, very interesting. Um, let me ask you this, Dr. Durr. Um, who, are you the only child? Who, how, who, who'd you grow up with? Like, who was in the house when you grew up? Um, largely, it was my mom and my sister, and we're only 15 months apart. Okay. So my parents divorced when I was pretty young, like three, and my mom didn't remarry until I was 15. So it was okay. pretty much, you know, my sister and my mom. So, okay, you and your sister and your mom. Okay, cool. Yeah, when and then my dad like... my dad remarried and I had two brothers from his second marriage. Okay. Yep, that's that. Hey, if you want to dig into that, that's another podcast, another day. We're not going down that road today. Out of that list of psychiatry. Yeah, right, right, right. I know who we, we Family know who dynamics. to right now. So I'll, I'll walk gingerly, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so look, but look, let me ask you this though. Because the question I want to ask you here on this podcast is, like, where did you see excellence? Like, where did you decide or when did you even know about this this genius, this intelligent genius? When did it when did you first recognize it? Where did you see it? And then when did you accept it? Okay, so let me let's so I'm gonna set the stage for you, which is the standard of excellence comes from my goddess mother, Melanie S. Spears. Um, and, uh, she was all about excellence, you know, both my sister and, and my, my, my sister, like I said, she's a little younger than me, but my sister actually, um, was also great at academically and athletics, um, went on to play basketball for, for university of Tulsa. Also, we recently retired as the, uh, corporate vice president of audits for Boeing. So, uh, so yeah, so we were. It was all about the. It was. It was all about the black girl there, magic in our right? house. <laughs> yeah. It was all about the black girl magic. <laughs> y'all been in y'all bag. I could. That's right. Okay. That's that's, that's right. 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 Okay. And right. and my mom, who had started college, but then you know had me, and so she didn't finish. She after we graduated from undergrad, my mom went back and got her undergrad degree, and then got a master's degree. So you can see, again, it's all about the black girl magic. And um, so that standard was always there for for us in terms of when did I know? Oh, you know what? To be honest with you, in that way, in terms of the brilliant, you know, that was, to be honest with you, maybe within the last 10 years or so. And I, I and I'm saying that because, you know, I I tell people I was just being me, and I'm just doing the best I can, and I have no idea or real understanding that that's what I'm exemplifying, right? That's what I'm demonstrating, and it's only been in having the conversations 
with other people and the comments that they've made to me that I'm kind of going, oh, really? Like, like one of my, my, my dear friends and business partners, Frank, he said to me, he's like, you do know that going to medical school and become a physician is like one of the most difficult professional training paths there is, right? I was like, uh, no, I kind of didn't really think about that. That part. Yes. That so part. I love that. I love that. That like it's it's ingrained in you. It's been in you. It's nothing to you. It's no big deal. You're just following a path and it's you're not making a big deal of it. Is that is that kind of just like you just be you're living in your infinite potential. Right. But unaware that that's really what I'm doing. And again, and it's said, only when I retrospectively start looking back, like for instance, where I can really see it started to form was in third grade, I, myself and two other boys, and I was going to John Harvard elementary here in Chicago, because it used to live, grew up in part of my childhood in Inglewood. Yeah. Uh, and myself and two of the boys, we got pulled out of class once a week to go to teacher's college. Yeah. In third so, grade. In third grade. Yeah. So the teachers college at that time uh is now Chicago State, if I'm not mistaken. You know what? I'm I'm yeah, because I'm not sure if it was Chicago State or if it was one of the, the city schools. I'm I'm just not sure. Okay. All but right. you probably so know that better than yeah, you probably know that better than I do. And um so I think that's where it, it really began. But like you said, I'm really kind of unaware of the significance of that. And then we you know, we moved out to the South suburbs and, you know, again, it's just kind of doing the best I can. And then again, you get a, another separation that occurs in high school because I'm in the advanced math track that leads into the senior year of taking AP calculus. And when I started, there was only myself and one other, you know, African-American girl and her family moved away at the end of freshman year. So sophomore year through senior year, I'm it. And what school? What school? What high school? Um, Hillcrest High School okay. in Country Club Hills. Yeah. yeah. So, and then of course, many, because of the other coursework I'm taking, sometimes there would be a few, you know, African-American kids in there, like what I'm talking about, you know, like the chemistry, but there's chemistry, there's biology, you know, and, um, uh, those kind of class works, but there's only a few of us. Um, so uh, it's, 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 but again, I'm just doing the best I can. Cause sometimes some of the stuff I was like, what, what is this? I don't know. I think it's, I, guess, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm going to be, man, there is a ton to unpack in this in this in, in any time we talk like you and i very rarely do short brief casual conversations um but we're gonna we're gonna we got, we're gonna we're gonna pack it in in this episode we're not gonna explore it all in this episode right um there you would probably and i'm giving this invitation live right here we're gonna have to invite you back there have only been other two other guests that we've ever brought back for part two and so you'll be third in the history of this podcast where we're going to have to have a part two, right? But for the I'm sake of it. today's episode, right? Yeah. Um, so you grow up in this. You're having these amazing experiences. You don't even realize how dope you are. What is it to live in your sweet spot? What Because it sounds... Correct me if I'm wrong. Ten years ago, do you feel like you were living in your sweet spot already? Had you discovered the sweet spot? No, I was just I was just starting to discover um, the sweet spot because I was being called by spirit to move from just uh, pro to, to just providing psychiatric care one on one to being on a platform, giving this message to a large number of people uh, at, at a time. And again, through the process, I even, even that I realized, I was like, I didn't ask for this. Why are you asking me to do this? I didn't go to seminary and I didn't go, I don't have a mentor and, and I don't know what I'm doing. And you know, folks who have a problem with this message. <laughs> and through the process of working through that, and then also 
of even encountering people in my work as a psychiatrist, you know, I, I've, you know, I've had patients ask me like, they're like, what are you doing here? And what they were saying was the level at which I think and operate on what, why are you in this environment? Um, you know, I had somebody else, um, a few years ago and he said to me, he's like, you know, you're a rock star. And I was like, uh, okay, I'm going to have to sit and think, think about that and take that in and, and said, you know, there is something to this. So be open to it and explore it. And, and, and then also, you know, even through the process of working through that, you said something to me, you know, you were on, on, on my show um, earlier this year doing season one. And then the process, you flipped it and I call it having a conversation, but you flipped it. And then you started interview, asking me questions, interviewing me. I was going to I have to roll some of my show back from Scott. And afterwards, afterwards, I said, and I said that to you, you know, we were laughing, joking and talking about it. And you said, and what you said to me was, yeah, I have one of the most brilliant minds on the planet sitting in front of me. And I was going to take advantage of asking you some questions. And, and, and it was only through the process. I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. And I says, but it was only through the process of, me being open that I could say for Scott to say that, wow, that is high praise indeed. Let me again, think about that. That's consistent with somebody saying to me, I'm a rock star. So let me, let me think about this. And somebody else said, said that to me recently also. So it's, I, I, re I say this because when, and I've had this conversation with my daughter who graduated from honors from Wellesley College. When you fly with eagles, it can be hard to recognize that you, that you, you know, you soar with eagles. It can be hard to recognize that you're an eagle. You just know that you flying around with th these other folks who are just like you. And so there's not necessarily, and, and they're excellent too. So, and, and you see some of the things that you know that they do better than you. And so you can still sometimes question and in doubt, you know, your own brilliance and your own wonderfulness. And so it's, 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 um, you know, it was, it's a, pro it's a process, but it was a process brought on over even before the 10 years, frankly, of, you know, my, I call it my life force, you know, my, my spirit being calling me to do some things and to make shifts and transitions. And so I think to be honest with you, Scott, it's really only this year where I'm really like here. I'm when I'm really here and going, now I get my own unique wonderfulness. Yes. Now I see my, my own brilliance, right? It, it it's it's um and I don't and I don't and I don't have any any pro problems telling folks, you know I, I'm 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 a youthful sixty years young spirit. Amazing, Amazing. shout out because you do not man you 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 fifteen twenty years younger easily physically right like as we see you nobody gives you sixty so to God be the glory. Yes. What I would say, right? Like, like don't crack, you know? <laughs> as long as you take Ab care of it. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I've never done this on my show before. I've taken pride in being consistent and sticking with our format. Okay. Um, but I'm going to make a change. I want to call an audible, a real-time pivot. Yes. For the first time ever in uh -huh. season five of this, of this show. We've never made this change. I want to ask you a few different questions. Okay. Normally we're at the we're at the uh, apex of our conversation time, and I normally would ask you three essential questions around edu around education. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a different question. I'd like to know. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I work with other entrepreneurs, and you said to me one time about making sure that I'm not. These weren't the exact words, but hanging out with pigeons. Um, 
then I'm an yeah. eagle. Or don't flock with turkeys. Don't flock with turkeys. Yeah, eagles. Like, I said eagles don't me. flock. Eagles don't flock with turkeys unless turkeys are on the menu. See what I'm saying? So what does it take? What would you say? You got an individual who is not affirming themselves in the highest, who is at their they're they're blocking their own ability to see that they're, they're an eagle. Mm -hmm. And then it's time that they fly as an eagle. Top three, four, five things you need to tell them to help them get out of it. So one, you have to believe in you. And so you and you and and so the you have to then look at what where's your disbelief coming from and what are your fears? And usually we've adopted some other people's opinions of ourselves and or we formulated opinions of ourselves that's not consistent with our true identity and possibilities. And so you got to be willing to spend some time looking inward, not from a place of judgment and criticism, but from a place of discovering who you are, not saying, I am this, not placing limits on that because we don't really know, right? And discovering the fullness of who you are and your potential and then allowing that to manifest through you. And part of that also means looking at your fears. So one of the things that I, that I, that I say to, to, to people is that if I'm looking, when I'm looking at you right now, Scott, all I can do is see you from here up. So how is it that I'm going to tell you all of who you are when I can't even see all of who you are? But, and even when you look at yourself, the same thing is true. No matter what angle you look at yourself from, you never see all of yourself. Mm -hmm. So you need to be open to the truth that you don't know all of you. You don't see all of you. You don't know all of you. And so more and all of you is possible. You have to be willing to change that framework. The other part to that is, is I'm in the universe. And guess what that means? The universe is in me. You know, the, the, the atoms in my body comes from exploding stars. Come on. The iron in my blood comes from exploding stars. The calcium in my bones comes from exploding stars. So how is it that I, a child of the universe, made of stardust are inadequate? Just ain't even possible, right? The same, the, the same, the same material that seeded the universe is in me. When they said when, when Earth, Wind, and Fire says, keep your head to the sky, Ooh. that's because you need to know that what who you are is consistent with what, what is above you. Not the as as Master Yoda Star Wars says, not this crude matter right? We, we are light. We are star children filled with the infinite potential of the universe. We are that infinite potential. Those items and that energy shaped and formed to take the form of us. So you, you need to know who you are. You need to know what you compose of where you came from. And it needs to be based in truth, not just on the opinions of some turkeys and pigeons. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. That that awareness. Because first of all, just hearing it, right? I already know some people go get in our, our our comments and think that we're not talking about God, right? Like, oh, you're giving it to the universe and stars and science. Whoa, wait, wait. So we're not even we don't no need to address that. No, no, no. Let's go ahead and address it. No, let's go ahead and address it. No, no, what no, it no, is no, is that no, all no, the wait, wait, the create no, no, the creator no, no, no. of all there is wait, wait, creates the wait, wait. creates the universe creates you and me. We not what is the creator? This. What is God the creator going to use but itself to formulate the universe? This so the essence and the core of all that of that. Message. That is huh? not. An, this is not an attempt to silence this this point that you're going in on that we know to be true. Uh huh. Is to be the prelude for part two. Okay. okay. That's what we're doing. I'm okay. in control. We ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. We know what's what. 
It's coming yes, sir. part two. I'm trying to re- preserve the, the 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 essence of the show time wise okay. right now. Okay. Okay. That's why we already know we got to bring you back for part two. Okay. Uh, but but I wanted to say that first let them marinate on what you just said first. Yes. Okay. Let's they need time just to hear and understand and accept that to be true before they can even begin to start to appreciate appreciate the message that you bring that brings us closer to him. Uh, bring what well, brings us in the closer awareness of that he is already within us. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Um, tell the people, Dr. Derek, we have like two minutes, less than, where they can find you and what it is that you want them to know about your platform and your message. So my, my platform is one from the intersection of mind, body, medicine, science, and spiritual well-being that, 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 um, that we are already are and already have all that the infinite creator God is, therefore heaven abounds in us. That um, we are the infinite potential. We have infinite potential because we are infinite potential. And, And when we know who we are and live in that, allowing it to flow through us uninhibited, unrestrained, unrestricted, that unlimited potential, that boundlessness that we are, gets to demonstrate in our lives and the lives of, of, of others, right? Demonstrating the brilliance and the magnificence that we are and that others are in service to the whole. That 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 is that is our purpose. Tell the people where they can find you on social media or online. You can find me on my website at balanadermd.com spelled B-A-L-I-N. A D U R R M D dot com. You can also find me. Um, that's the, the handle for me across social media. So on um, Facebook, uh, Twitter, now known as X, Instagram, and my YouTube channel uh, of the of the same name. I also have um, a book called Heaven Abounds in You that's on Amazon. And then, as you mentioned early on, I, I have a show called Dr. Durr's Living in the Sweet Spot. And, and that airs on um, Wednesdays on BBS Radio uh, at 7 p.m. Central. And then again on Thursdays on E360 TV and it streams live at uh, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central to uh, streams live to Facebook, Twitter, uh, excuse me, Facebook X, YouTube, uh, and LinkedIn. And I'll, again, so I'm also on LinkedIn too. So it's, um, and I have similar conversations on, on, on my show, Dr. Durr's Living in the Sweet Spot, uh, which is, again, you can find it on Apple Podcasts and you can find it on Spotify and some of the other platforms, but it's, it's, and it's living in the sweet spot is really about me n- knowing, accepting who I am as infinite potential and living in that flow. People call it flow, right? Living in that flow so that I'm guided, directed by it. And I'm also going to allow it to demonstrate through me fully, right? Whereas many of us, what we have a tendency to do is I like, it's like, it's like we choke it out, um, out of, out of our fears and, and our self-doubt, so to live in the sweet spot is to be connected to, to trust in it in order to allow us to guide, direct our path. And, and we end up living lives that are beyond what we um, imagine or sometimes intellectually know what we know is possible. You know, we, God said to me, you think you have something to give up in terms of me calling you to do this work? You have nothing to give up. You have so much to gain. You don't even know. You have no idea. And that's what we are as, as infinite potential. We have no idea. So we need to explore it. We need to know it. We Frankly, we need to trust it. And then the understanding of it will come. But in the meantime, we're going to have some amazing experiences and we're going to have some growth, some things that challenge us, iron sharpens iron, the chart challenge us to help us grow and develop because there's some things 
some ways of thinking and behaving that we need to leave behind. We can't, we cannot take it with us to the place we're going. When I, again, when I was in high school, the ways I studied and practiced and trained in high school was a good foundation and basis, but I had to learn some other things and do some other things differently at a collegiate level. So you have to, you know, toss everything away, but I, I can't take everything and everybody with me. So just, you know, it's just, it's, so we're going to have some troubles. We're going to have some struggles. We're going to have some difficult times, but believing in me and my possibilities, right? Then I just, I'll do what's required and get it done. Knowing that my purpose ain't yours. If I'm, if I'm the liver, don't compare myself to the heart and go, I ain't good enough because I ain't the heart. Because the truth of the matter is my liver has a vital function and without it, my body dies. So if I had two hearts and no liver, the body's still dead. So look at me, focus on me, love on me, give me self-compassion and encouragement and fulfillment and the pats on the backs and say, you got this. There is nothing that my God self can't do that it's called to do. Why? Because y'all was designed and purpose for this. I was given, I was given the power and the authority to fulfill this before I came here. Well, all of the um, links to your profiles will be in the show notes. Um, again, as you already know, this is a very powerful conversation. I want to thank you for part one. We will definitely get you scheduled part two to follow up immediately to uh so again we want to thank you for joining us on dope people today again dr Derr, to all of our old subscribers our usual suspects thank you for joining us today if you are new make sure you hit the like and subscribe button i am your host big Stu scott stewart professor stewart sitting with the incomparable dr D ballon a Der MD, thank you again. You already know what it is. Until next time, everybody. Peace.